This video talks about a specific antifungal called terbinafine. Now, like my other videos, before we talk about the specific uh, antifungal, let's go over a quick overview about other antifungals that are available to us. So the first one is going to be amphotericin B. Amphotericin B makes holes in the cell membrane which allows electrolytes to leak out of the cell causing disruption of the cell membrane, causing damage to the fungus. So that's one mechanism. That's mechanism number one. The second one is going to be, there is a protein called beta-glucan, which uh, helps to make the cell membrane of the fungus. And caspofungin is going to, beta-glucan therefore inhibits cell membrane synthesis. And third is going to be nystatin. Nystatin is going to block uh, uh, the product, the protein ergosterol, which is also going to inhibit the cell membrane, therefore inhibiting um, cell membrane synthesis of the fungus, therefore um, disrupting or inhibiting uh, the, the reproduction of more, more fungal cells. So those are the three that works at the level of the cell wall or cell membrane. What about protein? Now, squalene is a protein that is seen inside the fungus. Squalene is converted to linosterol. Linosterol is convert, converted to ergosterol. Okay? Now, squalene uh, is converted to linosterol by, the, by using the enzyme squalene epoxidase. And squalene epoxidase is inhibited by the antifungal called terbinafine. Okay? And terbinafine is the drug that we are going to be talking about here. So we are going to talk, we're going to talk about terbinafine in details. But let's move on through our flowchart. So linosterol is converted to ergosterol and it is achieved by P450 and this mechanism is inhibited by the drugs called, called the azoles and azoles are, are very good drugs for uh, systemic mycosis um, or let's say cryptococcal meningitis or blastomyces or coxoides or histoplasmosis all those things are inhibited by the azoles for in general for systemic uh, systemic mycosis and so the, those are the ones that work at the level of proteins what about um, what about DNA synthesis so pyrimidine synthesis is inhibited by a drug called flucytosine okay flucytosine inhibits uh, pyrimidine synthesis and how does it do so flucytosine is converts the nucleotides to 5-fluorouracil using the enzyme cytosine deaminase. Um, as a result, they're not going to continue making more DNA for the fungus, therefore inhibiting the fungal cell. So that's how flu cytosine works. And we use flu cytosine for, um, for systemic mycosis as well in combination with amphotericin B. So they're used for cryptococcus, candida, and henceforth. And there is another type of drug called the microtubule inhibitors, and those are the ones that, that are called griseofalvin. Now, griseofalvin is a drug we often use for treating superficial infections, dermatophytes, uh, tinea, ringworm, all those things are inhibited by microtubules. My, microtubule inhibitor, which is griseofalvin. Now that was a general overview. Now let's talk about the specifics about ter terbinafine and let's talk about how some clues you can remember some things about terbinafine. I know antifungal drugs can be a little bit painful to remember because um, we don't read them as often as other drugs. So let's see if I can make it easy. Now I already talked about that the mechanism of action of terbinafine is inhibiting the enzyme squalene epoxidase, right? So it inhibits squalene epoxidase. So you know how I remember it? Terbinafine starts with a T, squalene starts with an S. So ST, there is the one, the letters follow each other. So if I forget, what's the enzyme for, uh, that is inhibited in terbinafine? I know that the letters kind of follow each other, so I can come up with the conclusion that it must be with S, it's squalene epoxidase. Okay, so that is the mechanism of action. Um, what about clinical use of terbinafine? Clinical use is dermatophytosis or onco, oncomycosis. Dermatophytosis, another name for dermatophytosis is ringworm. Okay? It's going to prevent ringworm. 
and onchomycosis is the most common ringworm of the knee. Okay, so those are the clinical use of uh, terbinafine. Now, what about the toxicity of terbinafine? Now, we can see that it inhibits uh, the enzymes squalene epoxidase, which is kind of a cholesterol because it's squalene to linosterol, linosterol, linosterol to ergosterol. It inhibits P450 from linosterol to ergosterol. So it seems like this could be going in the liver. Okay, these are the type of enzymes that's going, that's going to be going on in the liver. So as a result, because of so much uh, common, um, common chemical reactions between the fungus and the human body, we are going to have liver toxicity. And with the use of terbinafine, we have to do LFTs or liver, liver function test. That's one toxicity. The other toxicity for terbinafine is visual disturbances. So you're going to have vision problems with terbinafine. So the one toxicity is going to be liver toxicity, so we have to do LFTs repeatedly. And the next one is going to be visual problems. So that's my interpretation of terbinafine. Do remember that how can we remember the enzyme? If you don't just remember it, squalene epoxidase, think about how the letters follow each other, okay? And it's the most, it's a, the clinical use for terbinafine is going to be dermatophytosis and oncomycosis. Dermatophytosis is the ringworm of the skin and oncomycosis is the ringworm of the nail. Toxicity is liver toxicity, visual disturbances. It's not that hard. So that's my interpretation of Terminophilin.